<clears throat> what's up everybody what's up everybody sorry for the delay had a little technical difficulties but just want to say uh welcome to another episode of uh this brother talks uh weekly show that we that i do on every monday at 7 30 central standard time 8 30 eastern uh and we're gonna jump right into things and you know for anybody who gets on i just want to tell you thank you for checking me out you know share it with other people um and continue support and i really appreciate it um and <clears throat> everything that i talk about is, is is clearly subjective it's just my thoughts and my thoughts alone doesn't make it true or false or anything just the way i feel at that particular moment and so we're going to start out with something <clears throat> that's kind of close to me i'm here in oklahoma and so um we're going to start out with um with this right here the oklahoma announcer making racist comments during um the quarterfinals of the girls 6 a uh championship uh series and it was a uh, norman uh high school versus midwest city and <clears throat> a lot of people don't don't know this but you know to get deeper into things is like you know you're here in oklahoma um a lot of people don't know norman is mostly white i mean you have black stuff that live there but it's mostly white midwest city it's predominantly black. There's a lot of blacks that live in Midwest City. And so <clears throat> if you heard the the comments by by the uh, announcer doing the live stream, you heard that say they were going to uh, take a break uh, during the national anthem. And the, uh, the announcer uh, that said to him, he was like, can you believe they're taking a knee? And the announcer, Matt uh, Rowan, said, who? Midwest City. And see, that's the thing that struck me because he thought it was Midwest City because it said taking a knee. Remember, I said Midwest City. You know, if you look at the picture, their team is predominantly black. You look at Norman, their team had a few blacks, whites, you know, it looked like someone may have been mixed. I'm not sure. But that being said, you know, he came in thinking it was Midwest City. But, you know, and excuse my language, I say this right here, whenever he he said, no, it is, it is Norman. And the first thing to come out of his mouth is fucking niggers. And like, that's the thing that bothered him. I have a question for him. This is the biggest question I would have for him. Was he referring to the blacks or was he referring to all of them, the black and the whites? And it you know what people fail to realize is that you know it's a lot of people to have behind this fake patriotism and all this good stuff and i'm gonna get into that a little bit later but to try to take away from what these young ladies were trying to express and what they were trying to do you know and then to just to blurt out and call them that and then come up with this sad excuse for saying what he said, you know, he said during the game, and mind you now the game hadn't started. And then, you know, he said he suffers from type one diabetes. Now I will say this right here, you know, I don't want anybody to be sick. You know, I've had family members, I have friends that have diabetes and I've never known a side effect or anything for diabetes to to turn you racist. And when he blurted this out, you know, you can say it was a mishap of the tongue, whatever. It was too, too. When I, I mean, it just came out too easy. So this is something that, and I don't know this guy personally, but this is something that he said before. It's something how he really feels. And I don't care how you feel about people taking knees for the flag, how you feel about the flag, if you feel like it's disrespectful, at the end of the day, it's not disrespectful because we kneel for a lot of things. We kneel to pray. We kneel at grave sites. We kneel at a lot of things, you know? So don't use that fake patriotism as, as an excuse. And for him to say, during the National Anthem, they took the, they, they, they took the, the, um, the knee, and he said he suffered from type one diabetes during the game. His blood sugar was spiking. 
And when that happens, he becomes disoriented and often say things that's not appropriate. Um, I, I've, I've worked in the medical field for many, many years, and I've dealt with people with medical issues and stuff like that. And diabetes is one. And I've never, ever seen anybody just blatantly become racist. And whoever his PR people are and whoever is putting these statements out for him, it is sickening that you would really take that stance because it's, first of all, disrespectful to anybody that has any type of medical condition that they deal with on an everyday basis and to use that for an excuse. It's a lot of people suffer from a bunch of different things, but that don't make you racist. It's a lot of different people that, that, that just suffers from, it's a lot of people I know that suffer from that, and I've never known them, never known him to, known them to, to, to just blurt out dumb shit like this right here. Like, excuse my language, that's what it, it was just dumb, inappropriate, racist, at the end of the day, you can come up with whatever kind, instead of just being a man and say, hey, I screwed up. You blame it on diabetes and a slip of tongue and then said you didn't know your mic was on. So if the mic was off, it was OK for you to say that. Basically, that's what you said. And I think that, you know, anybody that that will will defend this gentleman and think that it's OK, then you are part of this problem that's in this world today because these young ladies were just using their voice. They, they see stuff that they're tired of seeing. And kneeling during the anthem is nothing disrespectful because the flag stands for every freaking American there is. It doesn't stand for the military. It doesn't just stand for the president. It doesn't just stand for Congress. It stands for all citizens of the United States. And that's what people fail to realize. And at the end of the day, you can come up with whatever excuse you want to come up with. The people who fought, died, bled, you know, come back with this is the whole purpose. This is the whole purpose of them going there. So you can, so you can peacefully protest, you know, and these same people that just like him, you know, you're talking about these young ladies you know, protesting and, and disrespecting the flag. But these same people that does it, I haven't heard you say anything about the rioters that happened on January the 6th that went into the Capitol and was talking about hanging the, the vice president and the speaker of the house and putting our, our you know, congressmen and senators and stuff in danger and destroying government property. I didn't hear any of that. But because someone takes a knee, that makes you uncomfortable, but that other shit didn't? That's the problem with this good old United States of America. When it's something that you believe in, it's okay, regardless if it's right, wrong, or indifferent. But if it's something that you know you disagree with, oh, it's, it's, it's okay for you to be racist. It's okay for you to say that. And you know, at the end of the day, these young ladies, set out to 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 make a statement and at the end of the day this norman high school team these girls were good they were undefeated and you know it's a lot of people in this world would have let that shake them would have let it rattle them and at the end of the day they did not they went on to win the 6a state championship in girls here in oklahoma which is that's a tremendous feat to go undefeated win the state championship and to have to deal with the bs of somebody blatantly being racist towards you. So the biggest question I have is if if it's effing niggas, who was he talking to? Because at the end of the day, it was a lot of whites on that team too. And I'm glad that the parents and the teachers and the staff, they got behind them because this is just totally insensitive. This is you know, a guy that he doesn't care about anything. He definitely shouldn't be on air. He should have been fired on the spot. This is something he shouldn't be doing because if you can, and then like a lot of people 
haven't paid attention to this. His colleague did not even correct him. If that's me and somebody makes a comment that's racist or insensitive, I'm, I'm correcting them right then and there. I'm not just going to sit there and allow that to happen. And that's what he did. So he he is just as, as guilty. He's guilt by association because he allowed it to happen. And for him to feel comfortable enough to say that to his colleagues says a lot about both of them. And then you come up with this lame ass excuse on why you said it, why you did it. You know, you blame it on, you know, diabetes and that's bullshit. And we all know it is. It, it, it is bullshit. So exactly. That, that's what I say when 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 Travis. When my sugar spikes, I become racist. Like, that's what people feel. Like, everybody gets sugar high sometimes, but that, that don't make us racist, you know? And, like, you know, it just bothers me. It troubles me. One, because it's close to a place that I live, that I know, because I'm here in Oklahoma. And I saw it before it hit national news. They were talking about the coach had posted it and showed it. And... You know, for him, he's a he had to be a pretty decent guy to be able to handle that because he's a black man. And you're dealing with kids. And so for this guy to just like just blatantly come out your mouth and call somebody some effing niggas, that says a lot. Because, you know, for you to say that, that's something that you use all the time. It's something that you use all the time. I don't care what you say, what anybody say, it's something that you, you know, it's just something that, you know, you say all the time. TC, I agree. Yeah. You, you got a man up and Mitch, you got caught. That's what it was. He, he, he got, he got messed up and he got caught up saying stuff that he's used to saying. Like I, you know, I was saying this right here the other day, telling my wife that, you know, he can't make up excuses for that because there's a lot of people sick that don't, don't become racist whenever they sick. I said, you just can't make up excuses for that. I said, and like, I can even use this for an example. If somebody got Alzheimer's or whatever, and then all of a sudden, they just come out their mouth saying this type of stuff. They used to say that stuff back in the day before when they was in their right mind. Because that's what usually happens. All the time is you go back and you revert back to time and stuff like that. And so you can't make up excuses for that. You know, I don't understand the fake patriotism. It bothers me whenever it comes to that stuff. Like, and I'm glad that whoever, you know, had any type of dealings with this company, you know, did away with it. But this company is showing their true colors because it's nothing that needs to be investigated. What needs to be investigated? He said what he said. He said it on air. He's already admitted to him saying it. So what needs to be investigated? The man shouldn't be calling high school games, more or less calling any type of game. And you know, for him to just do that, it was just a sad excuse. You know, you know, it just it's it just a sad excuse, a poor excuse for, you know, anybody to make about somebody kneeling during the national anthem. And, you know, when, when it's all said and done, you know, he's probably going to keep his job. He's probably going to be just fine because and if he does. This is my personal opinion. The people who didn't fire him, they probably feel the exact same way at the end of the day. At the end of the day, that's what it is. And it just saddens that, you know, in 2021, that we're still dealing with racism. And I know some people always talk about, well, I'm tired of hearing about racism. I mean, we're tired of experiencing it. It's sad that it has to be that way. So, you know, shout out to those girls for doing what they were doing, the Norman High School girls. Shout out for them to for going on and winning, you know, that quarterfinal game and then, you know, going on semifinals and then winning the championship in the 6A class of um, in, in Oklahoma. Shout out to them. And this guy, in me, my personal opinion, I think he's a piece of trash because, you know, it, you know, and, and, and I'm, I'm real big on this right here. Like, I'll tell you straight up, everybody makes mistakes. But, you know, you it's how you come back from it if you admit to it, he 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 won't really admit to his wrongdoing so i just think he's a piece of trash and and it, if anybody don't like it i don't care because that's just my personal feeling that's how that's how i feel about it. i think he's a piece of trash you know to first of all 
to say that and then to say it about young ladies that's in high school. You know, I looked at their roster and, you know, they got freshmen. I think they might have had two seniors, everybody else, juniors uh, and, and sophomores and a couple of freshmen. So for you to say that to children about children, that says a lot about him and a lot about his character. And so, you know, shout out to those girls again. And I hope the company does the right thing and get rid of that clown. All right. So we're going to move on to the next topic. This is something that, you know, a lot of people, you know, brush under the rug. They haven't said a whole lot about it. You know, this guy, Luke Walton, is the coach of the Sacramento uh, Kings. He's been the Sacramento Kings uh, coach since, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it's 2019, 2020 season. And this guy is making a living and off of the games that he coached for the Golden State Warriors. And I'll tell anybody this. Anybody could have coached that Warriors team. All they had to do was just put the players out there, sub in, sub out. They're going to win just because they were that good. And he's keeping job. He keeping his job. They told him his job is safe. I don't understand how his job is safe. And I, and I want you guys to listen to this record line of what Luke Walton has done as a head coach in the NBA. Imagine that. I'm not putting the Golden State Warriors stuff here because he was just, you know, filling in for Steve Kerr while Steve Kerr was out with back with back issues. You know? Um, yeah, Hargrove, I agree with you. His, his daddy has a lot to do with it. The name has a lot to do with it. And, you know, LJ, I'm not going to go there, but I'll show it to you. I, I, I kind of agree. That's, that's what it has a lot to do with. But Here's his record as a head coach. 2017 with the Lakers, he was 26 and 56. 2018, he was 35 and 47 with the Lakers. 2019 with the Lakers, he was 37 and 45. The Kings, his first year, 2020, 31 and 41. And now this year, he's 15 and 23. His overall record is 144 and 212. And this guy still has a head coaching job. And they continuously say that his job is safe. And at the end of the day, why does he still have his job? Why? He hasn't been a good head coach in the NBA. I mean, in the discussion, I'm not saying he can't coach, but you know, he has done a dismal job. LJ, but they did Avery Johnson like that after he took his team, you know, deep into the playoffs. And if I'm not mistaken, did they, you know, they might have lost in the first round to an unexpected team. I can't remember that by Avery Johnson. But TC, you're right, man. That's horrible. It's it's very horrible. 144 and 212, and he can hold on to his job and have job security and continue to get paid and do an awful job at what he at, at what he's supposed to do. At the end of the day, Luke Walton should not be the head coach right now. I'm not saying that he can't go somewhere else and coach, but and even start treating them like they treat the black coaches. At the end of the day, I'm not gonna bite my tongue. You know, Nate Taylor, I was just about to go there. Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson was in Golden State. They got rid of Mark Jackson. They gave, they gave Steve Kerr a championship-ready team, and he won a championship. Well, Mark Jackson had already laid all the groundwork. Already laid all the groundwork. You know, got them disciplined on defense. You know, all of that good stuff. They get, you know, had did, you know, Steve Kerr came in. He might have changed a couple things here and there, but that team was ready to win right away. They were ready to win right away. And so Mark Jackson really got fired. And see, a lot of people don't tell this side of the story because him and and, and see, I, I've been in the NBA world. And this is how the NBA world works. So these guys and coaches uh, go to whatever city that they're, that they're playing in. They'll live there for the season. Most of these guys, if they haven't signed a long-term deal, they're leasing and renting houses, apartments, whatever. But some of them go and they buy places. But 
even if they buy during the off season, they go to wherever they want to go, their home state, home city, wherever they want to, wherever they want to train and all of that good stuff. But they wanted Mark Jackson to stay in the Bay Area full time when this guy had a church that he was pastoring in 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 L.A., if I'm not mistaken. And they wanted him to give up all of that. And 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 that's one of the main reasons why Mark Jackson didn't get the job. Now, I will use this. Now, Mark Jackson's name doesn't come up a whole lot. I feel like and this is my personal opinion. Mark Jackson has seen the dirty side and the blackballing side of of um, of the NBA. So he's the one over the commentating and he's enjoying that. He doesn't have to put up with the, the, the BS of, you know, all of this type of stuff that he was dealing with with coaching. And. Now I think he might be just satisfied. I don't know if he want to come back into coaching. We see that in football with Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy seen all types of stuff. He decided, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get into commentating. This is where I stay. This is where I be. And so Mark Jackson might be in the same predicament, but it's nowhere in the world that if Luke Walton was a black coach, they would have been fired his ass. There's no way he would have got the second coaching job after what he did with the Lakers. After what he did with the Lakers. And Travis, I mean, I, I have to agree with you. He hadn't even got an interview. And I don't know if it's because he's shutting the interviews down or he just, you know, satisfied with commentating or they just, you know, blackballed him. I don't know all of that yet. Maybe I'll do some more research to see, but we're going to see. But back to Luke Walton, there's no way in the world that this guy should be coaching and be a head coach with a 144 and 212 record. And they'll let him go on through this season and they'll just keep paying him. And then he'll fill out his contract and they'll do all types of stuff. They might even renew him because they feel like, oh, he's a good coach because what he did at Golden State. And he didn't really do shit at Golden State. He didn't. He didn't do anything at Golden State. Besides feeling for Steve Kerr, the team was already good. They, they were going to win. Like I said, me, you, Hargrove, TC, we all, LJ, Travis, we could have went there and we could have been coaches. And all we had to do is, you know, hey, you go out there and play, do your thing. Hey, I, I'll sub you in whenever your time comes. Because people don't realize the NBA has, it's a set schedule. So if you watch the game, you notice some players come out at the same time. You might watch it. Oh, this person come out with three minutes left in, in the first quarter. Simple. I mean, that's a, you can write that on the paper. Hey, uh, KD come out with two minutes and 30 seconds into the first quarter. We'll put him back in, in the second uh, with, with about 10 minutes. You know, that'll give him, you know, a good a, a good amount of break or whatever. That's what, that, that, that's what people fail to realize is that that would have been a dream job for anybody. And as you can see now, like, you know, KD's left. They've been hurt. Steve Kerr ain't the coach that everybody thought he was. <laughs> I mean, so Luke Walton is not a good head coach. He might need to go somewhere and be an assistant and learn some more. But just because you got the Walton last name, just because you play with the Lakers don't mean you can coach the Lakers. Just because you coached a few games for Golden State, that don't mean diddly squat. Simple. Simple as that. It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. So, you know, I don't understand why this guy still has a job. I don't understand why. I, I, I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Hopefully, you know, they'll find somebody who's qualified. They'll find somebody who's, who, who's able to, you know, just – you know, take that team and take some of that young talent that they have or, you know, put some pieces together and make them a formidable franchise again. Because I remember the Kings used to be good. And now they won the bottom sellers like this year now. Like I said, their record is 15 and 23. But what gets me is the 144 and 212. This guy, this guy has lost 212 games. He's not even 50%. In his winning percentage, and it's just it, it it saddens me to see that. But I'm gonna get off Luke Walton for a while, and we're gonna move on to something else. 
And like I told y'all at the beginning of the month is, you know, it's, it's Women's History Month. And so I just want to take a brief moment and we discuss some, you know, women that's in the sports world and all that good stuff and get them that credit, get that credit, credit is due. And so the first woman I want to talk about is going to be Jeannie Buss. And Jeannie Buss, everybody knows Jeannie Buss. Her father was the longtime Lakers owner. He passed away. He handed it down to the kids. They didn't get along. Jeannie took over. And so she's a president of the Lakers and she's also part owner. And she's been 30 years in the business. And, and people fail to realize this is for her to be in there 30 years. Yeah, she had, you know, her family business. Her, her dad was, you know, um, um, was the owner. So she, she was brought into it. She was brought up in it, you know, all that good stuff. But after her dad died, I mean, she brought the Lakers back to, you know, a, a dominant franchise, you know, she she um she runs the day-to-day operation she she represents the team on the board of governors for the nba um she actually just won a championship last year in the bubble in a male dominated sport and a male dominated owners league and for her to do that you know she has to have some clout she has to have you know some she gets respect from you know everybody and all that good stuff and so you know i just want to you know just Put a highlight on Jeannie Buss because that's a big deal. Because to be able to be an owner and to hold your own in that fraternity of coaches, I mean, in that fraternity of owners, is really big. Now it has a lot to do with her training and upbringing because I know she learned a lot from from a dad, Doctor Buss. But for her to keep that going and to make the Lakers more formidable, and she got a good core around her she got lebron james and you know anthony davis and you know a bunch of other pieces but she 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 has a a a good outlook on the lakers right now and so you know um trav says she worked on every level of the organization and you're absolutely right she has she worked on every level and she she worked her way to the top so it's not like it was just oh dad died huh this is yours so you know i have to agree with you on that so you know, Jeannie Buss, I shout out to her for what she's done um, and how she's handled the Lakers organization since her, her uh, father passing and then, you know, having to really, you know, push her brother to the side so the organization could be ran properly and ran the right way, the way she felt like her dad wanted to keep it going. And so, you know, shout out to her in the NBA. I don't care if the Lakers win another championship. I just like the fact that she's able to you know, hold her own in this male dominated, you know, owners league. And so we're going to move right along and we're going to go to the next female, next female. Everybody knows, everybody knows of Simone Biles. Like it's hard to not talk about female athletes and not talk about this young lady right here. I mean, at the, the, the tender age of 23 years old, she's already won 30 world and Olympic championship medals and like got to be the most decorated you know, you know, gymnast of all time. She has uh, 23 um, moves and she owns, she owns more medals than any other male or female. She has three different moves that, you know, she performs that is, is, is named after her. And if anybody says it, she is LJ, you just took it right away from me. A goat. She's the coat of gymnastics. And you know, this is real big right here, just because you get medals and all that stuff. But like she's five times the all around champion. And this is real huge to me right here. This is very huge to me. It's like, you know, for, you know, I'm all about females getting their money. I'm all about females, you know, you know, getting their, their due. And that being said, she has a lot of endorsements. And that's really where, you know, gymnasts and a lot of people make their money. And so I'm just going to name all the endorsements that she has, the big endorsements that she has. She has an endorsement with Nike. She has an endorsement with Kellogg's. She has an endorsement with the Hershey Company, United Airlines, Procter & Gamble, the mattress firm, and Beach by Dre. I mean, that's a lot. So, so, some male professional athletes don't even have names of this magnitude. And for her to have that at the tender age of 23, that says a lot about her. You know, everybody sees what she does and she's a perfectionist on that gym floor. And, you know, just shout out to Simone Biles. I could talk about her forever, but 
everybody knows what she does, but I just had to highlight, you know, some of the stuff that she's done. And then, you know, we got another Olympics. I'm, I'm pretty sure she's probably going to be in it. And after that, if she went a few more. She'll be the most decorated in the world because there's a couple of, she third right now. It's a couple of others that's in front of it. It has a few more, like one has 32 and the other has 33 medals total in, in the world. So, you know, shout out to Simone Biles and, you know, and, and all the women in this history, in, in this women's history month, like, you know, let's, let's celebrate our women, whether they play sports or they don't, because it's women in this world is doing stuff that's not in sports that, you know, I can name, I, I can name a couple of them, you know, to, I, and I'll be honest with you, we're going to get off Simone Biles, but I, I you know, at first I, I was thinking about doing this and, and highlighting my mama, like today, if I'm not mistaken, I'm so confused with the days we, you, you know, two years ago, we were burying my mother. And, you know, that's women's history because my mom took me when I was six weeks old. I wasn't her biological child. And she raised me like I was her own. And she treated me like, you know, she really birthed me. And she done everything. She made sacrifices that I've never seen anybody else make sacrifices for and then sacrifices to do like just a phenomenal, phenomenal woman. So, you know, she will always go down and for every day for history, but for women's history, you know, I saw the struggles. I saw the things that she did to make a way uh, for me and my siblings to, to have and not have to worry about a lot of things. Everything wasn't always great, but she always made a way. I always had a meal, I always, you know, had clothes on my back, you know, shoes, all that good stuff. Like, you know, it's just, you know, I could talk about her for days and days and days and days because, you know, the times where she was hurting and she would still make a way to come see me play basketball in Charlotte like two, three times a week. You know, her body would hurt and she never complained about it. You know, I just watched her make sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice and after sacrifice. And so, you know, that is part of my, my my women's history month because my mom played a big big part in to me growing up and you know being a man and teaching me you know right from wrong have i made mistakes yes but for the most part she brought me up the right way what i did as a grown man has no reflection on her and so you know with that being said you know like i said i could talk about this woman forever because she's done so much for me. She's done so much for other people. Anybody that, that lived in our community knew that Carolyn McIntyre, Mommy House, you can come and get you some sweet potato pies. You can come and get some banana pudding. You can come and get good, 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 good meals. So, you know, she she looked out for everybody. And so, and like I said, I'm going to move on because I could talk about this woman and I'm getting kind of, you know, teary eyed and all that good stuff. And I don't want to cry on camera and all that stuff because, you know, she's near and dear you know, to my heart. So, you know, we're going to move right along. And, you know, next topic um, is going to be, you know, the NBA. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to March Madness. You know, March Madness is back. I haven't watched too much college basketball. I was able to watch a little bit over the weekend because, you know, they had championship weekend and all that good stuff. So I saw some of the teams play. I caught games here and there, but I was able to see, you know, some of these you know, games and some of these teams and see how they really were and how good they were. And uh, yeah, TC, but I'm about to move on because I didn't want to get too emotional. But um, but yeah, but March Madness is back and we got the number one seeds as Gonzaga. They're 26 and 0, Baylor 22 and 2, Michigan 20 and 4, Ohio State 21 and 9, if I'm not mistaken. But um, you know, I was able to watch some of these teams. I'm going to get down and watch some more because I'm I'm going I'm to check out March Madness and stuff. But I'm happy it's back. Last year, we didn't have a tournament. It just feels good that everything is kind of getting back to normal. So we're able to have this the, the tournament. They said they were going to have a tournament regardless. Um, um, but it's some interesting things going on. The powerhouses that's normally there, like the Kentuckys, and the Dukes, they are not there. And I love that because this is how I feel about it. And some people may not look at it this way. I feel like this right here. 
I've never been a fan of Coach K. I've never been a fan of John Calipari. I felt like John Calipari and was one of the best recruiters, if not the best recruiter of all time whenever it comes to recruiting talent. But as far as coaching, I never thought he was a great coach. And a lot of people look at records and look at, you know, that type of stuff and say he's a great coach. No, sometimes that talent on the floor wins you games. Most of the time in college, when you're far superior in talent, you can win games. But here's what I say about Coach K and, and Calipari right now. It showed me that a lot of these other coaches are better coaches than those two. Simply because of this. The playing field was even. Like when I say even, because it's a lot of stuff that Duke and Kentucky couldn't do that they usually were able to do in a regular season whenever COVID and stuff wasn't going on. But now everybody had just about the same amount of time. The playing field was level. You couldn't get all the practice time in that you wanted. You couldn't get all the extra in that you wanted. And as you can see, they faltered under that. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I felt like other coaches did better jobs in this situation than they did. It was so bad that Coach K was trying to call the season off a long time ago because he knew that his team wasn't like they used to be because he wasn't able to do all the things that he was usually doing to make his team better. I'm not saying it's illegal or anything like that, but I play college basketball. And I know whenever you have big money, you're able to do more with the money because your budget is a lot better. You know, you can keep people there over the summer. You can bring them in for weeks and weeks at a time. You you know, you got facilities to do whatever, but when the facilities are closed down, you can only be there for short periods of time. You can only do this. You can't have people there during the summertime. That takes away from a lot of things. And some of these smaller programs or the programs that don't have as the, the biggest budgets because, you know, they don't make all the money for basketball and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff, like football schools, for example, for example, Ohio State. Michigan was a football school, but now Jawan Howard has turned him back into a basketball powerhouse. And so with that being said, I just feel like they got out coached, which I felt like they never could coach like that in the first place. And I just felt like they had better talent than everybody else, so they won basketball games. Plain and simple. You could disagree with me all you want, but that's how I've always felt. If you look at both of them, watch them whenever they play against just as much talent. And when the game get close, both of them look lost and clueless. They don't have a clue what to do. Calipari does a lot of yelling and screaming at players, but he doesn't do any X's. No great recruiter, all that good stuff, but not a great coach. But back to March Madness, March Madness is back. And I'll tell you this, Gonzaga got a hell of a team. And a lot of people have put some of these big, big names to, to be in the Final Four. And I haven't got down to all the nitty gritty of it and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, LJ, I agree with you. This is what it all boils down to. It all boils down to money. They, they got to get that money. And before I get started on that, Natale, I love you because you're an Eagles fan. I love you because you're from Rayford. Don't give me that bull crap. Make it up excuses about being very young and need an extra time. Everybody else was the same way. When I said the playing field was the same, it makes a big difference. Come on now. I mean, Duke is supposed to be a, a powerhouse. Y'all been young before, and y'all all, all you've been young before. That's all I'm gonna say. It won't no excuses then. Quit making up excuses now. <laughs> but I'll say this right here. I watched Michigan play a few times. And if anybody saw what happened the other day with Michigan, and I can't even remember who they were playing against, but Juwan Howard got thrown out the game. And y'all mark my words, don't be surprised 
and Michigan come in with a chip on their shoulder simply because it is not because they're not good, not because people are counting them out, because if I was playing and I saw my coach go to bat for me like Jawan Howard did, I would go out there and bust my ass to make sure that I gave him the same. I gave him the same. Yeah, and they tell that's who they were playing against. They were playing against Maryland. You're right. I gave him the same that he gave me. If this guy can go out there and fight for me like he was about to fight that coach the other day, I'm going out there and I'm busting my butt for this guy. But we can't sleep on teams like the Illinois and the Alabamas and, you know, you know, teams like that. This is a level playing field for everybody. And I like it because we don't just say such and such is about to win the national championship. Yeah, Gonzaga 26 no, but it don't mean they're going to win because you can catch them. See, that's the thing about the NCAA tournament. It, it, it's a one and done type thing. You can catch somebody on my best night. They're not having their, their greatest night, and I can knock them off. Baylor, I watched them play. Baylor is talented, long, athletic. You know, Ohio State, a lot of people picking them. But, you know, as, as, as things progress, I'm going to go and I'm going to look and I'm going to fill out my bracket. Like I said, I wasn't up in, in, in college basketball like that. Hey, LJ, I agree with you. Alabama going to be a problem. Now, this, you know, they might want to take full advantage of it because Alabama is one of them type schools where it's a football school, their best year, and then they slack off two or three years because they have trouble recruiting and getting people to come to Tuscaloosa because it's a football school. But you're right. They're going to be a problem. I watched them play also, and they have a really, really, really good team. TC, any given night, it can happen. It can happen any given night to, to, to anybody. If I go out there and I just play my best, nothing, nothing. Hey, if I go out there with, with nothing to lose, everything to gain, that mentality, you know, will take you a long way. So, you know, you never know what's going to happen on any given night. But to say I am happy and excited the tournament is back, I'm excited that, you know, it's some type of suspense in it now. Like we don't just have, you know, oh, what well, Duke going to win, Carolina going to win. You know, we don't even know. Like Carolina didn't squeak themselves in. You know, you got good teams from the ACC like Florida State. Like, they really got a chance. A lot of people sleep on them. And, you know, Florida State has a really good team. I watched them play. You know, so, you know, we, we all know what's going to happen. And hopefully um, that's, that, that's exactly what I was going to say, LJ. It's, I think it's going to be a lot, of up, a lot of upsets. Like, because I think the playing field is, is, is even. LJ, I agree. I think, I think the playing field is even. It's going to be, you know – a lot of upsets. This, I, that, that, I truly do believe that, and it's the year of it. So I'm excited about it coming back. I'm excited about, you know, watching the games and checking them out. So I hope everybody else is paying attention to them too because mark my words, mark LJ words, it's going to be it's gonna be some upsets. It's going to be some upsets. And so, you know, March Madness back. I hope everybody enjoyed. I hope everybody have a good time with March Madness. Because I know I am. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch a lot of it. And I say a lot, I mean a lot. So I'm going to catch up on basketball that I hadn't been watching in a long, long time. Because I, I've been kind of busy, but at the same time, I haven't been interested because some of the games hadn't been too great. So I'm going to give a quick spill down of uh, my NBA power rankings. Hadn't been a whole lot of games played. There's been a few games played, but like this is the time of year where the games kind of stretched out because after the all-star break, they don't have as many games they had in the first part of the season. So, but right now I still had the next one, the 76 is at two, even though I'm beat out. You seen what they did to the Spurs last night. I got the Bucks at three, Suns at four, Jazz at five. And, you know, the Suns and Suns, I think they're one and one since the all-star break and the Jazz just took a good thumping. Um, you know, the Lakers only played one game. I was kind of hesitant about putting them in there, but, you know, we shall see. You know, we're going to watch these this week of games here. We got some games on right now that, that's going on. We'll check out some more, and then we'll see what the what the power ranking is going to be after next week. And so th this, this, this is my power ranking. Uh, the Nets, uh, 76ers, Bucks, Jazz, I mean, Suns, and then the Jazz. That's the way I see it right now. You know, other people might have theirs a little bit different, but – like I said, this is the show I do. This is 
this is what I'm, you know, how I look at it is how it is for me. And so, you know, and, you know, I, I watch NBA, but I don't watch NBA because some of those games get a little boring. They play all the same teams and, you know, on TV or whatever. I'll be trying to catch some of these other games and stuff out, but not with the power rankings, but them Charlotte Hornets looking pretty good. You know, my home state and LaMelo ball, he out there balling. I told somebody, that, you know, I said it on on one of the podcasts, start out with the Charlotte Hornets have a star in the making in LaMelo ball. If anybody disagree, I'm telling you. Yes, Travis, the Suns over the Lakers, like right before the All-Star, they thought the Lakers. Now, the, everybody tried to get a Laker because they got LeBron. But no, 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 no. The Lakers, if I'm not mistaken, they may have won two or three of the last seven, something like that. So that doesn't do me any good. Now, so I'm, I'm good on that. LJ, I called it early too. I've been telling people, like, they got to make some changes now because this boy needs the basketball. I mean, I, I think Jordan them and Mitch Kupchak them get a good job of, you know, of putting some pieces. Now they're they missing just a few more little pieces, but LaMelo Ball is going to be a star in Charlotte. I hope they're able to keep him. So if they, if they what they need to do is get some more people, get some more, you know, players and stuff around them to keep them happy there because Charlotte is a small market. But I do think that he like it there. He looks like he's having fun. He looks like he's just having a good time. And that's a great place The people in Charlotte like but when fans get back in the stands, he'll see how much they embrace him. And that will play a big part of, you know, him staying in Charlotte also. Hadn't had this much buzz in Charlotte since uh, since uh, Grandma Ma and, and, uh, and Lonzo Mourning. That, that, that's the most buzz we've had in Charlotte in a long, 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 long time. A long time. So, you know, LJ is acting. So, like, you know, that, that you know, so we're going to see what's going to happen. I hope they put some more peace around. I hope he stays in Charlotte, make start Charlotte – you know, some contenders in the East, because if you put some more pieces around that young man and, you know, have all the veteran leadership that you need, anything can happen. And Charlotte's done it before. It's just a matter of getting some more pieces and do it again. And so <laughs> what Trav say? He said he could be a big fish in a smile. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. That, 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 but that's why I say if you put, surround him with pieces, you can make that big fish that big fish very happy. He'll be glad to stay in that small pond. So, and we're gonna move on to the last part, and I call it my final word. And here's my final word. I told you I was gonna come back to you know the, the Norman girls basketball team, and it has a lot to do with a lot of people in sports and all that good stuff. And so I play sports. A lot of us that watch this have played sports, a lot of us, you know, talk sports. But, you know, we've had some issues with, you know, people tell the athletes to shut up and dribble, you know, shut up. They shouldn't talk about this. They shouldn't talk about that. They shouldn't get into politics. But here's my take on it. If you have a platform, use it. those young ladies use their platform to bring attention to something that they felt was near and dear. And evidently they, they talked about it as a team. They discussed it as a team and they brought it together as a team and they did it. You know, a lot of people will say, you know, athletes shouldn't get into politics. Athletes shouldn't do this. Athletes shouldn't do that. They should just, you know, just, you know, play their sport and shut up. But what makes them any different from the average man or woman that, can talk about sports. We can talk about sports. We can talk about politics. We can talk about everything. Why can't they let them use their platform, continue to use their platform to make, to try and make this world a better place and not just be, you know, some type of entertainers that just entertain and entertain and, you know, and never do anything to give back to this world besides being, an extremely gifted basketball player, football player, baseball player, hockey player, you know, all that good stuff. So I tell anybody, whether you're in sports or just out in the regular, if you have a platform, use it because you never know who you could help, how you could help them. I mean, and, and it's not just always politics. It could be anything. Like I use myself for an example. 
I love to give back to the community. Anybody knows me that if you ask me if you need it, I give you the shirt off my back. I give you the shoes off my feet. And if anybody knows me, they know I've done it before. And I give back to the community. I, I love giving back to the community because you never know if and when you might be in the same situation. So, you know me, I got something near and dear to me. I feed the homeless. I use my business, my platform, and my family to feed the homeless. I, you know, I'll offer people if you want to help out, you can. If not, it's still going to be done. I'm going to feed the homeless. I'm going to try to give them personal products with the family, clothes, whatever, whatever I can do to help out. And so whatever your platform is, do something, whether it's bring attention to racism, if it's to bring attention to sexism, if it's to bring attention to, you know, anything, just use your platform, use it wisely and use it correctly. And so we can all come together and make this world a better place. And so when I say to athletes, athletes continue to use your platform and keep making people uncomfortable because that is the only way that we will get any type of progress or anything you want to get done is by making those who are comfortable uncomfortable. And if you're uncomfortable about something, that says a lot. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do whatever to make you uncomfortable, to bring light, to share light on certain things. And so continue to do it. And like, just because some of you may not be these big name celebrities, you still can bring attention to anything that you want to bring attention to. Use your platform, use it wisely, use it correctly, bring attention to whatever you want to bring attention to as long as it's in good faith and good light and you're done you're doing it the right way like i'll continue to bring attention to homelessness and poverty because i just look at myself i could have been that i could have been somewhere you know on the street i could have been someone that and like i you know i just i just and people don't know i just love helping people like with disabilities and you know a lot of people know I, I have a cousin that got in an accident in, in 1997 he paralyzed from the waist down you know and a lot of our friends just kept going on with life and you know I made sure my life centered around that because I want to make sure that he could do the things that you know every teenager could do so whether it was go to a football game and let me carry you up the bleachers so you can watch the game up there with your classmates, you know, whether it's load you up in the van so we can go to the mall, hang out, do whatever, you know, that's what it was. And so, you know, I just feel like, you know, that that's my calling. I'll bring attention to stuff. And I think some of us, you know, if we come together and do things together and use our platforms, whether you sell cars, whether you work in a factory, whether you, you know, drive for Uber, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You can share light on something. I mean, all of us on social media, we joke a lot, but sometimes we can take this social media platform because you don't realize how many people are paying attention to you. Look at the likes and stuff that you get on some of your posts. You know, you could make a difference by shedding light on something. So I encourage everybody, find something that you like to do. Find something that you want to bring light to and, and push forward and do it. I have a lot of things that I like to do. And some things I may tell you, I may tell I may not tell you because I'm kind of a private person whenever it comes to that. I like doing stuff and not having the cameras on me and all that good stuff. So I encourage everybody to do the same thing. Use your platform, just like those girls in Norman for that team. They were trying to shed light on racism and you know, all that good stuff because people don't realize it was a full year with Breonna Taylor not having justice for her death. You know, it was the same day that, you know, uh, Minneapolis settled the $27 million suit with uh, with George Floyd's family and stuff like that. So, like, 
people don't realize the magnitude of what they were trying to shed light on. So I encourage everybody else to do the exact same thing. And that's my final word. I want to tell everybody who made comments, who checked it out, who, you know, just, you know, made this a great 55 minutes for me because I enjoy interacting with everybody and seeing everybody's comments and, you know, just seeing that you were on here. I just want to say thank you. I'll be back next Monday and I have a, a little special surprise for everybody. It might get a little heated, but it's a celebration of Women's History Month. So I tell everybody, have a good evening, have a good rest of your Monday and have a good rest of your week.